Hi, this is Gary Fong, and I'm going to unravel the crazy mystery of Canon wireless flash using their own built-in system. It's a very, very interesting, hard-to-figure-out system that involves things like this. little blinking, which means that it's on flat, uh, slave mode. It involves that maybe we use the 580EX as a master, or maybe we use the pop-up flash over here as a trigger to tell the other slaves what to do. And this pop-up flash could be part of the exposure and then kind of wipe out your cool off-camera flash look. Or you could disactivate that. Or you could use the 580EX2 on top as a master, either having the flash contribute to the exposure or not, which is also confusing. That requires another menu choice. Or you could avoid all of those and then just get one of these transmitters that has ratios and all the different controls on the back. So those are all of our choices for the wireless flash system for Canon. Using this kind of a system though, which is kind of neat, I'll just tell you your hardware choices. If I wanted to do two different off-camera flashes, and let's talk about exposure groups, I would set one to exposure group A, one to exposure group B, and then I could do a ratio. I could tell A, you, B, on regular TTL, give me a proper exposure. I can tell group B, you, B, half the power of A, so that I have less light, or maybe double the power for a hair light or a kicker or something like that. So I could actually control two different flashes. But in order to do that, I need to have another piece of equipment, which would either be the transmitter or the pop-up flash. And all of those require menu items. So I'll tell you something. This is so complicated that most people I know, even professional photographers, don't even go here. Uh, they might buy a simple radio unit, and that's fine, but you know what's really nice about using the Canon wireless system is that um, if you don't use the TTL transmitter, then you can basically fire these flashes without having to purchase any more equipment. Once you figure it out, and you'll figure it out by replaying my uh, YouTube video over and over again, you'll actually be pretty good at it, and you'd be able to kind of control things pretty darn fast. So let's go to the videos, and I'm going to show you step by step how to unravel this entire mess, how to use the 580EX as a controller with a flash not figuring into the exposure, which is why we want off-camera flash, or um, how to use the STE2 or the pop-up flash and not figure into the exposure. And those are all something that, honestly, you can't find anywhere on the Internet because I've looked everywhere. And so here's the solution. And uh, if you like what we've got, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, and we've got a lot more videos coming. Okay, so let's go to the uh, equipment. Okay, so on the Canon, we'll just go ahead and hit the menu button here. And uh, as you see right here, I've already selected flash control. So what happens is when I select flash control, there's some choices here. The one I want to modify is the built-in flash uh, function setting because that's the pop-up flash. So that's with cameras with a pop-up flash like 7D, 40D. And you'll see right here flash mode. That's the pop-up mode. It's on ETTL2. We, uh, we want to go down here to wireless function and we're going to select it and there's three choices. One with uh, that just shows it looks like a speed light. You see these little guys right here? Those are the pop-up flashes. So you see, see the difference? little pop-up flash and a speed light. So that means on this one, if I selected it that, there, the pop-up flash would actually be part of the exposure. In most cases you don't want that to happen because it's not really going to give you that off-camera look. This is the one you want if you want to power just the second flash. Um, so we want to go ahead and choose that and just click it on that. And then for channel, um, you know the only reason why there's so many different channels, you'll see there's chan four channels here is in case there's a whole bunch of Canon people running around in the same spot you are and you're all tripping each other's flashes, you might want to huddle together and say, all right, you go on channel one, you go on channel two, you go on three. Since it defaults to one, might as well just put it on channel two uh, so that you can make sure that other people just aren't going to automatically default to that. And then firing group A, B, and C, this is basically, this is uh, ratios. We're not going to worry about that right now because we're just going to power one flash at all. Down here, these are all ratios too. But right now what I have is I have it set up to to fire with the pop-up flash. The pop-up flash is going to be the actual commander. Now that pop-up flash is actually not going to figure into the photograph. 
you'll see it fire, but it's not going to do anything. It's literally going to be off time with the rest of the camera with the other flash, and the other flash is going to be the only one that's going to show. This is the, uh, the Canon 430EX flash, and this is the ideal flash for really fast setup if you're going to go slave mode, because it's not nearly as tedious and cumbersome as the 580EX. Let me just show you how. You basically just turn it on slave mode. Just go like that, click, and it goes into slave mode. On the 580EX2, there's uh, quite a different, it's a very esoteric menu type of situation going on. Of course, the 600EXRT I've covered in another video, much nicer with the menus. But this is the world we live in for the 430EX, and it's very, very simple. You just choose the channel and the slave, what I call the exposure group, and that will be dictated by whatever your commander is. So if your commander tells it to be on channel 2, you want it to be on channel 2. And that's done by holding down the zoom button until the channel lights up. And then I'm just going to use these right or left arrows, turn it to channel A2 uh, two, for example, and then exposure group. I'll just hold the zoom button again and then we'll just go ahead and we'll hit the zoom button twice which will activate that command and I'll just go to B and that will give you your exposure group A or B and these are the ratios this is the ratio mode that you can use in the other in the, the uh, master the head mode or the transmitter so let me just reiterate again real quick this slave thing here the ABC it's it's not real clear what they mean by that I want to call it exposure group so unless you're doing ratios you don't really ever need to take it into slave B you only really need it to be on slave A, and then your slave A will always be your... So we'll just hit the zoom button again until it goes, and then put it on slave A. And slave A will be your sole other flash. If you're going to have multiple flashes, that's when you put it into exposure group B. And then exposure group B, you can change the ratio by having it less or more, and uh, do whatever you want. This is the Canon 580EX2 and it can function as a regular TTL flash which is most of the time what people use it for it can also function as a master controller to tell slaves what to do or as a slave which would be controlled by a master controller such as another 580EX2 or the uh, the little uh, infrared controller the Canon STE2 transmitter but right now I'm going to turn this one into a master controller and the way I do that to take it out of regular flash mode is to hold the zoom button down for about three seconds and then it'll say off which means that the uh, wireless functions are off in fact I think this little zip zip bolt right there means that if you hold it down for a long time it turns into the wireless function I think that's what it's for because there's really no way of knowing and then uh, it's off if I want to turn it into a master I go like that if I want to turn it into a slave I turn one more time now master actually has two separate modes you can have it as a master with the flash on and figuring into the exposure, contributing into the exposure, or completely off. The flash will go, but it won't actually be a part of your photo. And you know the difference by this little teeny tiny spark here. That little spark means that right now it's going to contribute to the actual exposure. If I want to turn it off so that it's just a controller that tells the slaves what to do but doesn't do anything, doesn't contribute to the exposure, I'll just go ahead and hit that center button, hold the zoom button, and then let it cycle through. So this is how the zoom button actually cycles you through. So if I want to turn it to channel 2, hit the center button, and now it's on channel 2. If I hit the zoom button, hit the center button, and then the zoom button again, we'll just go through the different things. Now this right here, where this spark is going and on, that means that it's going to contribute to the actual exposure. This is something I searched high and wide to find the answer to, and nobody had it the answer to how do you turn the main flash off and this is, can completely ruin or make your off-camera flash experience if I want to turn it off which means that only the slave shows and not this guy I just did it let's review hit the zoom button it's off turn it and now it says that it's on so you'll notice that there's little sparkies there hit the zoom button again and then you click it once like that and it turns off and you'll see that there's no no sparks here that is a controller mode which means that this will not contribute to the actual exposure now let's go to the slaves we'll hold down the button again turn this one into a slave 
We'll just hold this down. It says master on. You'll notice there's no sparks, which means that we've disactivated this as a flash unit. Works only as a controller. Slave being on, you hit the center button. We're on channel two. And this is, uh, you know, we call this, I call it uh, exposure groups. Because a lot of people don't know what the heck this actually means. Um, slave A, B, or C. I call it exposure groups because then you can get into ratios. So if it's on B, when I go to my master head controller, I can do the ratios like I talked about on the STE2. But actually, let me show you how to do that now. Let's just assume that we have another flash that's remote that's on uh, exposure group B or slave B. Let's hold the, hold the zoom button down. And we're going to turn it into... Uh, it's on slave right now. We're going to go back up to master and hit OK. And now we'll hit that center button to let me cycle through the different ch changes. Now that's zoom, of course. We're going to go down here and see right there where it says ratio. Ratio is off, which means that it's not going to do anything to change uh, the difference from one to another. Now, I can't really use ratio with the master controller off because I don't have two slaves. But if I did, if I had two other slaves, so that would be this guy and maybe two 430 EXs, and I want them to have different ratios, I would go to the AB ratio. And then the A, if I went click, click, click like that, would be twice as powerful as B, but since we're still on TTL, the A flash on exposure group A would be a correct exposure, and group B would be one stop less. If I, if I moved it over here, and put it so that the exposure group right here, say it's four to one, that means the one that I christened or endowed as a B group slave would have four times the power as the A group slave, but it would also be regular TTL. So this doesn't mean it's going to blow it out by four stops. It means it's going to give a correct ETTL exposure with A in relation to B four stops less. And that's basically how that works. Um, to get us out of that again, I'll just hit that button and we'll just zoom through until we turn the ratio off. And now we have it, channel two, this is master, no flash, it's gonna control another flash that is on channel two. No ratios needed. Now this is the STE2 transmitter. There's newer models out. Uh, it's all basically kind of the same idea. There's a radio one for Canon that just come out. This one right here is the infrared system. So it's basically like using the commander that's on the menus in your camera with a pop-up flash or a master as a 580, blah, 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 all that other stuff. But what's nice about this, what's really, really nice is all these big buttons. I really like them. Like, for example, if I want to just change to channel 2, that's all I do. If I want high speed sync on or off, I just hit that one button. And up here are the ratios. So that's A to B. Now when I create my flash settings so that the flashes are in remote mode, I'll tell the flashes to be A or B. So let's keep in mind that I'm, for example, say always going to have my main light as A and then the kicker light or the background light or whatever as B. Here I can change the ratios. Now this is all completely TTL, which is nice. This is the ETTL verification light that'll, that'll go off uh, when the camera's on, uh, this will light up when the camera's on ETTL. But assuming that the camera's on TTL mode, that means that if you put it on A to B being two times A over one power of B, that means the A will be TTL and B will be half power. If I move this over to the right like this, that means that the B will be TTL and the A will be half power. So you can go, it's very, very intuitive and simple to think about. I want the B to be full TTL and the A to be one eighth less than the, um, than the other one. So this is our ratio control. If I want them both to be the same, then, you know, that might be, it might be a little bit boring because no matter what your distance is, the flashes are going to compensate until the flashes from the two directions actually look the same. So that's where you get into your creative ratio control. High speed sync, of course, the minute that you hit that, you'll be able to go up to a thousandth of a second on many of the cameras. And of course, uh, the ratio can turn on or off. If you only have one other flash, then you don't need to worry about this ratio thing or anything like that. As long as that flash is on channel two, then it will fire the other flash. Now this one will disable the pop-up flash, or this is for use in cameras that do not have a pop-up flash. 
and you want to be able to control them very, very simply remotely. This is also an inexpensive alternative to, say, having to put a 580 EX flash on or 600 EXRT if you're using the infrared mode because the 430 EX and the lower models do not do commander um, commander mode. They only do, I want to call master mode, they, they don't do commander mode, they only do slave mode. So that's when you would use this as maybe a, a cost, al cost alternative option, but this is really, really nice. Again, it's subject to the limitations of infrared pulsing, which means that, uh, you know, outdoors it's limited functionality because of the, the line of sight and also not being able to go around corners and things like that. Mm -hmm.